Physicists use trigonometry when describing the kinematics of bodies acted upon by forces pointed in various directions, as well as when studying oscillations. The purpose of this video is to review the definitions of sine and cosine and to reawaken facility with their manipulation. Construct a circle with radius 1. This is called a unit circle. Rama holds a bow, which is called kappa. The bowstring or cord is called chia. The half cord is jia adha, and the length of the other leg of the right triangle is kote jia. By writing the cord half as jia adha, we are choosing to label dimensions on this triangle using Sanskrit. The hyphenated word jia adha was sometimes referred to as simply jia, with the word adha meaning the half implied. Jia was sometimes written as jiva, which means something like a life force. It is a cognate with the English word quick. Jiva transliterates into Arabic as jiba, which is written using the two letters jb when vowels are omitted. During translation into Latin, jb was mistaken for the Arabic word jibe, which corresponds to the Latin word sinus. Sinus refers to a curve, to something hollowed out, to a fold of cloth, to a geographic fold of water into land, in other words to a bay or cavity. This is the supposed origin of the English word sign, or at least this is what Wikipedia and cursory review of Google results suggest. I have not carefully checked whether this story is apocryphal. Because we have built our triangle inside a unit circle, the hypotenuse has length 1. The label for the angle theta near the orange dot refers to the length of arc along the pink circumference of the circle between its point of contact with the blue dotted line and one of the corners of the right triangle. The arc length is a portion of the entire circumference of the circle, which is conventionally called 2 times pi. The length of the leg opposite the label for the angle theta is called sine of theta, and the length of the leg adjacent to the label for the angle theta is called cosine of theta. A smaller triangle with the same shape is said to have the same angle theta. If the hypotenuse has shrunk down to little r, then the length of the leg opposite to theta proportionally shrinks down to little r sine theta, and the length of the leg adjacent to theta shrinks down to little r cosine theta. The angle theta the sine of theta and the cosine of theta describe the shape of the triangle. Is it tall or is it wide? This information tells us the ratios between lengths of different illustrated line segments. If the triangle does not change shape while shrinking or growing, these parameters are unchanged. A larger triangle with hypotenuse big R has legs of length big R sine theta and big R cosine theta. What is the sum of cosine squared and sine squared? Pause the video to determine the answer. The cosine and sine refer to the lengths of the legs of a right triangle with hypotenuse of length 1. Because the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs equals the square of the length of the hypotenuse, cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta equals 1. The plots of sine theta versus theta and cosine theta versus theta are wave-like. We will track the vertical and horizontal location of a reference marker as it orbits the unit circle. Rising in the east, the marker refers to a location that has maximum rightward displacement from, and no vertical displacement from, the center of the circle. At this initial position, cosine is 1 and sine is 0. Sine increases as the marker rises, decreases as the marker sets in the west, and passes through a nadir as the marker passes through the bottom of the circle. When the animation repeats quietly, talk through the shape of the cosine curve as we have just done for sine. We are quantifying all our angles in multiples of a reference number called pi. How can we label the horizontal axis of this plot with numbers in decimal representation? In the third module of this slide deck, we provide two ways to have at hand a numerical approximation for pi. 
The first method involves a formal geometric argument. Construct a unit circle. Arrange three identical triangles. The arc length around the entire circle is 2 pi, but we have chosen our three triangles so that they correspond to a total arc length of only half a circle or pi. Since the triangles are identical, each triangle corresponds to an arc length of pi over 3. Because we are studying a unit circle, all radial spokes have length 1. This means that all three triangles are isosceles, and the unlabeled angles are all equal to each other. Because the interior angles of a triangle sum up to pi, these remaining angles must all be pi over 3. Indeed, the triangles are equilateral. To continue our discussion, we enlarge this triangle for a better view. Drop an altitude to divide the top interior angle of pi over 3 into two equal angles of pi over 6. The altitude we have drawn divides the opposing leg into two legs of length 1 half. In this diagram, we label the length of the altitude x. According to the Pythagorean theorem, which we just proved in the previous video, the square of the length 1 half plus the square of the length x equals the square of the length of the hypotenuse, which is 1. Isolating x squared and solving for x produces root 3 over 2. Flip the green triangle so that its long leg sits flush with the previous location of its short leg. This arc has a length of pi over 6. Draw a slender right triangle that shares a leg of length 1 half with the green triangle, and which has its hypotenuse touching the pink circle at the beginning and end of the yellow arc segment. The remaining unshared legs lie on a radial spoke with length 1, so the length of the remaining leg of the blue triangle is 1 minus root 3 over 2. We use the letter Y to label the hypotenuse of the blue triangle. Applying the Pythagorean theorem, the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs of the blue triangle, meaning 1 half squared and 1 minus root 3 over 2, that quantity squared, this sum equals y squared. Placing the difference over a common denominator 2 and simplifying provides an opportunity to pause the video to repeat the last step. We can solve for y, here meant to be a positive length. The yellow arc segment is a slightly indirect path for connecting the two endpoints of the hypotenuse of length y. Thus, pi over 6 is slightly larger than y. This is the same as saying that pi is slightly larger than 6 times the root of 2 minus root 3. Evaluating the radicals by hand or using a calculator, we find that pi is slightly larger than 3.1. We obtained our numerical approximation for pi by defining pi as half the circumference of a unit circle, and then using the Pythagorean theorem to study the lengths of the sides of right triangles. To increase the precision of our approximation of pi, we could draw and analyze increasingly thin triangles. However, rather than cluttering the page, we will provide a convenient mnemonic for memorizing six digits of pi. Sine, sine, cosine, sine, 3.14159. We have just provided two options for building up digits of pi. One option was to analyze the geometric properties of triangles formally, and the other was to memorize an entertaining chant. Knowing the digits of pi allows us to express the horizontal axis of the plots of sine and cosine in decimal representation. In order to be able to calculate the vertical values of the sine and cosine curves for a wide variety of angles, we sometimes make use of so-called angle addition formulas found in tables of trigonometric identities. In the final section of this slide deck, we show how one of these formulas can be derived. The purpose of this slide is to demonstrate that the sine of the angle alpha plus the angle beta equals the sine of alpha times the cosine of beta plus the cosine of alpha times the sine of beta. Mnemonically, we chant sine, cosine, cosine, sine. Draw a green right triangle with hypotenuse 1 and an angle beta. 
the remaining angle is the complement of beta. Because the hypotenuse of this triangle has unit length, the length of the leg opposite the angle beta is sine beta, and the length of the leg adjacent to the angle beta is cosine beta. Draw a large blue right triangle with angle alpha. If the green triangle is excavated from the blue triangle, the two remaining blue triangles are themselves right triangles. The angle indicated must therefore be the complement of alpha. This other angle must be alpha plus beta because the consecutive angles labeled as the complement of alpha, the complement of beta, and the sum of alpha plus beta must add up to pi. The leg opposite the angle alpha plus beta has length the sine of alpha plus beta. We use a purple H to label the length the hypotenuse of the purple triangle and a pink X to label the length of one of its legs. The ratio of sine beta to x is equal to the ratio of h sine alpha to h cosine alpha because h sine alpha is the length of one of the legs of the purple triangle, namely the leg opposite alpha. This leg has length sine beta. h cosine alpha is the length of the other leg of the purple triangle, the leg that is adjacent to alpha. This leg has length x. Solve for x to find that x equals sine beta times cosine alpha over sine alpha. The hypotenuse of the big blue right triangle, which is partially concurrent with one of the legs of the green triangle, has length sine beta cosine alpha over sine alpha plus cosine beta. We determined previously that the length of the leg of the big blue triangle opposite the angle alpha was sine of alpha plus beta. This length must also be equal to the length of the hypotenuse of the big blue right triangle times sine alpha, according to the definition of sine. This equation is the angle addition formula we sought to show. In this video, we developed a facility for working with the sine and cosine functions. In the previous video, we described a notion of flat space and demonstrated the Pythagorean theorem. Together, these videos illustrate some of the most basic geometric concepts that physicists routinely use.